Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm super excited for another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where we interview top team leaders and broker owners from across the country. Today, we have a very good guest on the show, the CEO and founder of Rockerbox and close friend of mine, Josh Cunningham. Real quick, I'll do an intro, Josh, and just brag you up a little bit. They have over 100 full-time callers in College Station, Texas, that make outbound calls to assist with lead conversion. They've called on over 2 million internet leads. So when it comes to millennial engagement, when it comes to an analytics and statistics and running and building and scaling a business, I can't think of anyone better to have on the show. And I know, Josh, I think this is your second or maybe even third time on, and we appreciate you coming back. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing great. I uh, appreciate you having me back. Uh, I do need to correct you. We've, we've hired and trained over 250 uh, part-time ISAs, not just 100. So been in the game for quite some time here, Dang. but uh, yeah, always a pleasure to come on the show and uh, share some of our wisdom and give back to the community. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And Josh has also has been invited to come and keynote at our team building summit this summer, June 24th through June 26th. And so we wanted to spend like the next 15 or 20 minutes talking about the content that he's going to be speaking about from stage at the team building summit. I think that it's going to be very applicable to anyone building slash scaling a real estate business. So Josh, let's dive right into it. Uh, let everybody know what your topic is and then let's kind of dissect that topic a little bit and talk about it. Certainly. So the, the expertise that we've gained here over the last six years, obviously you talk about online lead conversion. You know, we've scrubbed every single type of lead under the sun. We've worked many different CRMs, uh, specializing in Boomtown, Commissions Inc. and Firepoint. Um, so we've got that, we know that game, um, you know, in our, in our sleep, you know, we know how to convert leads, uh, uh, while, while, we, while we're uh, basically sleeping in our dreams. But the, uh, the other really, really profound kind of message that we wanted to come and bring and share is all the, the lessons learned, the hard lessons learned about what it takes to really build and scale an organization with millennial talent. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy that by the year 2025, it's estimated that 75% of the professional workforce is going to be made up of millennials. And uh, I know they've been the butt of most jokes over the last decade, but uh, but reality is sinking in. And uh, again, when we wake up and go to work six years from now, you know, 75% of the people we're surrounded by are going to be uh, millennials. So again, we've we've learned some incredible lessons. Uh, you know, our company is privately owned. We we bootstrapped. We built ourselves from the ground up. Um, you know, we started as a me, myself, and I operation, and then I eventually started surrounding myself with uh, the the incredible talent that we have here in College Station, which is home to Texas A&M University. Um, and then over the last couple of years, we've, uh, you know, we've built a multi million dollar organization with 100% of the efforts of uh, part time millennials. So we've got some awesome. really great culture tools to share with you. If you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see a picture of his office there in the background. Those are the workstations. Hopefully we see a VL. Oh, there's one right there. <laughs> we'll see some people coming in and out as we go through this today. Um, to get access to that, just go to YouTube, search um, the team building podcast and all the episodes will come up. Yep, exactly. So um, as I was uh, getting at, we've got some some really cool culture tools that we've developed here uh, within our office that, um, um, again, everybody knows that the work that we do is not the most exciting in the world. You know, people are just searching for homes on the internet and there you are to greet them to a website. You know, 90% of the people are kind of a waste of time. Uh, that's why we call ourselves Rockerbox is we got to sift through all the, the dirt and the, the sand to get those little flakes of gold. Um, but we'll, the, our secret sauce is really some of the culture tools that we've developed to make the work fun and meaningful and fruitful and um, really to, to really kind of bet on the, um, the turnover in the position um, because, again, we're in a college town. We know these students come here for a temporary time to invest in themselves and uh, to further their careers. So we're essentially borrowing that talent for the couple of years that they're here in this town. Um, while also giving back to them and, uh, and, and and allowing them to grow and move forward by giving them That's tons awesome. of real world experience. So they all walk the, the stage with multiple job offers. Uh, we've got incredible retention here as well. Um, but again, want to come and share some of those tools that, that we've used here that are really effective to um, bring in the top millennial talent. And keep I love it. And this definitely applies to anyone wanting to build their business and scale out, obviously, but there's lots of millennials out there getting their real estate licenses right now. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of millennials on my team and we definitely have found that millennials expect something a little bit different. So that's probably what we'll get into first is just kind of what's the mindset of a millennial? What are the different expectations slash standards that they set that we mm -hmm. ultimately need to adhere to if we want to be able to retain them. But before we get into that question, I'd like to set this up a little bit for anyone that doesn't already know Rockerbox. I'm going to steal Josh's thunder and tell his story. He ran around uh, with Frank Klesitz all over the country to hundreds of real estate events, thousands probably. Uh, Frank Klesitz is a, a friend of both of ours who owns Viral Marketing. 
And what he heard agents continually saying was that their agents weren't making calls. Their agents weren't making calls. Internet leads aren't converting. Internet leads can't be converted. Internet leads suck. And he thought, what if I could build a call center of people that were awesome with converting internet leads that would make calls, would be consistent, could call the second that the lead um, registered on the website and then highlighted the lead and handed it over to the agent. Would people be interested in that? I mean, that was kind of the test, right, Josh? Yep. And were people it. interested in that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like wildfire. Absolutely. So I do have a deal for you guys. Josh can speak to it. But anyone that does sign up for Rockerbox through Elite Real Estate Systems page, if you go to tools or Jeff's favorite tools.com, um, I, I believe you guys offer some type of a discount to our, yep. our listeners. Yep. Yeah. You're the only community that we do offer a discount on the startup cost. Uh, it's 500 bucks off. So, okay. so that's um, not, not bad. Yeah. That's, Thanks, uh, man. Yeah, definitely, definitely a nice <laughs> ad there. We we love working with your with your community. We know that they're uh, coming in here with some great coaching and great advice. So always. So happy if your to team's do. not doing it, which ninety nine percent of teams aren't, I I have my team doing it. They're doing our lead conversion, but most aren't doing it. And if you think they are, but you're not inspecting what you expect, they're probably not doing it as well as you'd like them to be. And just imagine if you got one extra deal a month from the time Rockerbox puts in six or seven grand a month in gross revenue coming in because of one extra conversion. And these guys are converting 10, 15, 20, depending on how many callers you have, that sky's the limit on how many additional conversions you'll get if you have those leads in there. So, yep. Yeah, the, the, the real magic uh, is, you know, the leads are already sitting in your platform. You've already paid for the ad spin, you'd paid for the CRM, but you're sitting there staring at 100 names and phone numbers and email addresses. Uh, and it's quite a bit of work uh, that it takes to actually scrub through those 100 people mm -hmm. to find the typical conversion rates about 10, 10% 10 conversion. So, you know, 100 people spill into your CRM and it creates a ton of just work that compounds on itself because you got to make the first call attempt, the second call attempt, on and on and on. The list Trip keeps building, you're getting bigger every single day. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's all that work that goes into identifying the, the 10 actual hot opportunities that need your expertise that you can then, you know, still very urgently follow up with and convey your value to someone and get yep. them in the car and start signing contracts yep. together. Love it. All right. Well, we're done with the sales pitch. I, I had to help Josh out because he comes on so often as a thought leader in the industry. Appreciate it again, Josh, that you're on the oh, podcast certainly. with us today. So let's talk about retaining that, that, that millennial. What do they expect? How do we deal with millennials? Because people, there is a, we are the butt of a lot of jokes. Josh, I think you and I are both in the millennial camp. Yep. Um, yep. millennials don't work hard, which is contrary to both of us. <laughs> millennials want to have their dog at the office. Millennials <laughs> want to give back to the community, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Um, they want a fun atmosphere. They don't want to be held responsible to certain, you know, they, they don't want to be micromanaged. Yeah. Um, they want to have a fun culture. They want Hawaiian shirt day on Fridays. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> like that. Yeah, exactly. So tell me um, where, where, what's right about all of those expectations or thoughts about millennials and where have we missed the mark? Yeah, it's really about, um, it's, it's a generation that's brought more attention to finding meaning behind work. Um, whereas previous generations, um, you know, and everybody is to each his own. I mean, we've all adapted to our times, but previous generations looked at work as just, you know, as, as, a, as a requirement, you know, you just have to go do this. You have a job. You never quit a job because it, you know, you have it. Um, there was just certain standards and certain sacrifices that were made, you know, again, rightfully so at the times that this newer generation are, you know, basically saying there might be a better way or could there be a right. better way, which to me, I mean, again, I, I am a millennial, but I do also feel that a lot of these attitudes are fall hand in hand with a lot of entrepreneurial attitudes as well, which is, you know, the confidence and the belief that there may be a better way. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so not always just following the, the, the norm and the status quo, but, but thinking outside the box. And so for us at rocker box, like, uh, like I said, we've, we've grown this organization with, with 100% millennial talent. And obviously we weren't, you know, a perfect running organization from day one. It was, we fail forward. We learn from our mistakes, but uh, one of the big things early on for us that, that was, uh, was very evident was, um, we were hiring part-time talent and, um, the first summer that we blew up, we went from like four clients to 24 clients in a couple of months. And we're just hiring on these warm bodies and we're throwing them to the phones and training them as fast as we can. And, you know, th there's a lot of moving parts trying to just keep your head above water. And something happened that September that happens every year in September here in College Station, which is school starts back up. Oh my gosh, big surprise. 
So awesome. all these students, they, you know, they, they, they loved the, the office. They loved the competitive environment. They loved all the scripts and the dialogues and the things that they were learning. But when these other priorities of theirs um, surface back up, which might be, might be football season starting back up, it might be a heavier workload this fall, or it might be more extracurricular activities that you're involved in. Um, we had like literally half our staff just bailed out. Like they were like, Hey man, love you. Love the business. I've had a great time this summer. I had so much fun. I learned so much, but this other more important thing is going going on in my life now. And for me, it was like, it was a catastrophe, obviously, because right. you invest so much into these callers to get them up to speed. But um, it was a catastrophe to, in, on my behalf, because I realized I had failed them. Um, because I had failed to, to really set the tone and make it very clear that this wasn't just another part time job that they would see any other part time job in this town selling sneakers at the mall or slinging beers at the local saloon. Um, whenever things t get tough, you just quit that part-time job. And then whenever your schedule frees up, you go and get just another part-time job again. And so that was our failure. We were in that category of just another part-time job. And so that's when we, we, we knew that we needed to make some changes. We needed to be very purposeful about our culture and very purposeful about the time that we were spending here. And at that point in time, it was something as simple as a daily huddle. Um, we knew that, you know, we're coming in all uh, every day from different, different walks of life from different paths, different mm -hmm. things going on outside in our world. And we all come together to then align and go on, on, on a unified mission together. But we didn't really have any type of start of that. And so a huddle is a very, very, very simple concept. I've heard about it a million different times, a million different conferences. But, you know, ideas are crap. You got to actually take action and implement. So uh, we came back and we implemented a huddle. It's very, very simple. It starts with recognition. We have a little bit of education where we go through some scripts and objection handlers. We also have a, an opportunity to connect with everybody through a little connection card. And then uh, the very last piece is motivation, which is us you know, setting our goals for the shift and, and being you know, held accountable by our peers. So something just as simple as that. And I'll dive deeper in my presentation at the Team Building Summit and, and, and really spell so what, out. How to what's different? So people listening, you know, as you draw parallels and you're building mm -hmm. your real estate team, you think about that agent that just kind of floats around and every six months they're on a different team. And mm -hmm. their lack of success is always because of the team or the market or the brokerage or the time of the day or the weather outside or whatever the case might be. And the truth is it's their own problems and not facing their own weaknesses and yep. shortcomings. So you have this huddle um, every single day. What do you think that does for that millennial mindset to look at your organization like it's different than all the other jobs that they've had? It's, it, it comes back to the giving meaning to the work. Like it's, 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 it's being purposeful and saying, hey, this is who we are. This is what we're going to accomplish today. This is what we're actually going to improve on because, I mean, any, any professional environment should have you constantly improving yourself day in and day out. So you shouldn't just clock in and clock out and get a paycheck. You should clock in, improve yourself, and clock out as a different person than when you clocked in. Um, so, so those types of things, just, just being very uh, clear and communicating that, and, and obviously there's a little bit of a rhythm to it. You know, you stand in a certain place and there's a whiteboard and there's some structure to it. But by providing that structure uh, and, and, and that focus, it gets people in the right mindset. And so it's, it's literally telling every single person, like, what you're doing has purpose. Um, we're going to recognize you for it. We're going to hold you accountable for it. You're going to grow. You're going to become better. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. Ready, break. And then we, we literally have a little break out of the huddle and then we go crush our four hour shift. Um, and it. so it's, it's just something just as simple as that. We do it with our sales team before we prospect. It's just, just getting everybody in that right mindset to go, Hey, we're all unique individuals. We're all humans with different issues in our life. But for the next four hours, this is what we're going to do as a team. We're going to accomplish sure. this together and we're going to help each other out. I think that's a great example. Anyone listening, I've heard a lot of real estate teams across the country taking advantage of huddles, a lot of sales teams across a lot of industries doing a huddle. Just bring your people together, 15, mm -hmm. 20 minutes, do a few role plays, get them comfortable overcoming objections. Dude, we do, um, our recognition is probably similar to yours. We'll ask everyone in the group to volunteer um, a positive comment about someone else in the group that did something over the last seven days. Yep. Someone went over and beyond in some way, which makes them feel good. Maybe a joke. And like you said, something educational, little training tidbit. And these don't have to be daily. I mean, our team does it uh, weekly. We have our weekly accountability meeting, which serves as somewhat of a huddle. But if you have an organization where the culture, you have a big group of people that are there every single day, mm -hmm. why not have a time to find us? Hey, this is our huddle time for anyone that's here. Let's come together for 15 or 20 minutes. Let's go yeah. into one more thing from sure. a millennial engagement and retention standpoint. And like we talked about, Josh is going to be keynoting at the Team Building Summit. If you haven't already gone online to buy your ticket, it's the teambuildingsummit.com. Our VIP ticket is 497. Our general admission is 
uh, 297, but Josh is going to help you today and we're gonna give you the discount code ROCKERBOX for 40% off. So if you put in the code ROKR, B-O-X, when you check out of your VIP ticket, you'll actually get VIP for general admission pricing. And I wanna know that you came from this podcast episode, so put in Rocker Box when you check out. Um, that event's gonna run June 24th through the 26th in conjunction with, we're buying you a VIP ticket. You're also gonna buy you a ticket to the College World Series Championship baseball game. Uh, Josh and a bunch of his staff will be there. And the thing that I, that I pride myself on when it comes to our summit is that all the keynotes, all the VIP speakers, all of the people that you want to actually see and spend time with aren't just going to be on stage 30 minutes. Then you don't see them again. Like most conferences, we're hanging out with you every evening. We're hanging out with you during lunch. We're hanging out with you at breakfast. We're present the entire time. So Josh will be there. I'll be there. Frank, Brian Charlesworth with CSU. Um, Gary Boomershine with REI Vault, Maddie Aitchison with Millionaire Mindset and The Rich Life, and then all of our VIP speakers. So you can see everyone that's speaking, the agenda, check out and buy your ticket on Eventbrite, all at theteambuildingsummit.com. All right, Josh, one more rabbit hole to take us down, and then let's make this a wrap. Yep. So another tool I have here, I actually went and pulled this off the wall. Um, once the organization started growing uh, pretty big, again, we're, we're all part-time labor. So, and we're open 80 hours a week. So if you can imagine the overlap, there's a lot of people in the organization that, that may not get a lot of overlap with each other. And we knew we couldn't go to name badges because we're not customer facing here in the office. That would look pretty soulless and cold to have people walk around with name badges. So what we actually developed is very, very cool is these, um, player cards so whenever a new uh person signs up and joins us here at the rocker box family we ask them to send us a you know a picture of theirs whether it be a funny animated picture or something that they want to be known for uh, and then we basically make them like a like a trading card kind of like a baseball card it has their hometown on there uh, but as you can see here we've got a couple different like there's some some logos and some some icons and some things on here that really identify like this is a top gun uh, recognition. Um, but what this identifies is recognition for everybody. So the real, the, the real truth behind what this was, is this was better than having name tags in the office because the organization got so big, we didn't really actually know every single person's name and not everybody could know everybody's name. So rather than have name tags, we just had everybody's, um, uh, card posted up on the wall, but the long-term effect of this, the real awesome millennial impact is this is great, great recognition because hmm. the way we post these up on the wall, it basically layers out into an organizational chart. So you can see when you walk into our organization from day one that there are these many different layers of advancement. So there's the opportunity of advancement within the organization. And you can actually see the people that you're working with side by side each and every day where they are on the org chart. And then I'm sure you've heard about this funny phrase called gamification, right? That's been a phrase that's been coming out in business for the last handful of years. But all of this stuff where we give them, you know, individual recognition about what they've qualified for, different achievements, if they're, you know, so some of these logos. And mean for anyone listening, this looks just like a baseball card. And then mm -hmm. there's little icons that look like app redirects, like Pinterest or Facebook, mm -hmm. but really their recognition based on how long they've been at the company, what type of success they're having within the company. Those exactly. Sort of yeah. What, what CRM they're specialized on, if they're a trainer, if they're an auditor, if they've won our top gun award. And so if you can imagine, you know, we have a, an entire, uh, you know, army of part-time millennials here uh, that are all very, you know, competitive in nature. And they're all here in a college town investing in themselves and, and, and working on becoming a better young professional. So this is a really, really, really cool way that just self-serves their, they their ability cards? to be recognized. I'm sorry? Do they get like a deck of cards that they hand out to people or does it just live on the org chart on the wall? Yeah, it, li it lives up on the wall. So okay. anytime they get new status, they get it printed off and get it updated. It's a big deal. That's and cool. They get you climbing know, up the wall. And Honestly, with agents, I think that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. Agents love recognition. So yeah. you could do it as simple as if you did a million dollars or two million or three million or four million. Yep. Um, yep. On my team, I have team leaders, individual agents, sub agents. They all could have their own thing. Yeah, so it's really cool. And I, like and I know you you said it on a podcast a year ago. That is it ironic that that uh, the generation that grew up with a video game controller in their hand now that they're in the professional workforce, if you can make their job as much like a video game as possible, they'll be really good at it. So. 
<laughs> Dude, it's so true. And, you know, I grew up with Nintendo. I told the story selling candy bars to win the Nintendo when I was five years old. Yep. The score, and I don't really care. Like, I'm on, I'm on uh, Xbox right now, and I know I get scores, and it's all gamified. I don't care anymore. But in the real world, I care, and I like recognition. Um, I'm yep. a DI. It's fun to have someone notice you. It's not just about the money anymore. Um, when it goes like career visioning, when we bring people into our organization, our question is what type of life do you want to live? Not how much money do you want to make? And then we help each person individually define how much money they think they need to generate to live that life. And mm -hmm. I think this goes right along with it. If you're not happy at work, why would you go? But people from 30, 40 years ago think that's a crazy mindset. Work isn't for fulfillment. It's not to be happy. It's to put food on the table. You'll hear people say that all the time. I don't yeah. hear millennials say, oh, putting food on the table. Like... <laughs> <laughs> just no one says that anymore like, and maybe that's sad and maybe we'll go because we don't eat on tables that's why right there you go we're eating in the car <laughs> well josh thank you so much for coming on today super yep. excited to have you on stage again yeah. he's going to be keynoting for 45 minutes getting really deep into this and i uh last year he used a slide which he's going to use again this year which shows rocker box's role in the overall evolution of lead to close and I know that they're doing amazing things. So if you're a team out there right now, having trouble getting your agents engaged, I wouldn't say you need to tell your agents not to make calls any longer, but you might choose to hire Rockerbox to help with that first couple of weeks because that's the time you've got to get in contact. You've got to build that relationship. And they're the best in the country at lead conversion, you guys. So how does somebody get in touch with you directly to thank you for being on the show today? And how would someone go about learning more about Rockerbox? Yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, content on our Facebook page. I would definitely ask a favor and give us a like on Facebook. Um, you can go to facebook.com slash rockerbox. That's R-O-K-R-B-O-X. Uh, our website, rockerbox.com. Not a ton of content on there, but you can fill out a uh, free form for a free diagnosis, a free account diagnosis. We'll actually jump into your CRM and um, kind of show you some, some of our secrets and, and, and uh, tips that we've learned along the way, as well as help you maybe identify a, a hot opportunity or two in there. Um, and then we've also got a lot of content on our, on our video blog as well, rockerbox.tv. 